Welcome to Indy's Real Estate Gurus. We're recording today from Advisors Mortgage Group Studio here in downtown Carmel, Indiana. And I'm Rick Ritman, your hardworking mortgage guy. I've been in the real estate and mortgage business for over 34 years. I've helped over 5,200 folks finance their homes. My team and I believe in custom tailored loans, not the one size fits all approach. We believe there is a best mortgage for you and we are the team to deliver it. And I'm Ian Arnold, part of Rick's hardworking mortgage team. And I've worked in the financial industry for 15 years, helping people and find the best possible financing. I'm an expert at helping you build your credit or just increasing your credit score. My passion is helping you uh, secure your financial security and your wealth over time. And as we get started today, we want to remind you, if you have any questions on the indie real estate market or on mortgage rates, Go to hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com. You can contact Ian or I from there, or you can call 317-2, I'm sorry, 317-672-1938. You did it again. I did. 317-672-1938. I, I cannot remember my own phone number. Goodness. <laughs> life, life used to be easier. You only had nope. one phone number. I got <laughs> yeah. like 20. <laughs> I don't know which one. Uh, we're also very excited today to be talking with Mike Feldman. Uh, he's a realtor with Compass. And uh, thanks so much for joining us, Mike. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. You uh, you do such high volume. You've you've done a phenomenal job. So we really are excited to hear your story. We think the story is everything, and we mm -hmm. know it, it, it. We hope it resonates with with our listeners, and that people can you know really get an idea of what you're like. Um, if they have any real estate needs, mm -hmm. what would be the best way for them to get a hold of you? Um, probably the best, well, there's honestly three best ways phone. So 317-965-5034. It's 317-965-5034. Text or phone call. Yeah. Text or phone call. Or my email address is mike.feldman at compass.com. Or you can shoot me a DM on Instagram. It's at Mike underscore bond real estate. And if so. he doesn't, if you call him and he doesn't respond within a minute, you go ahead and hit him in an email. <laughs> doesn't respond another minute, send him a DM. Yep. Get a hold of him. Yep. It actually says in my voicemail, you know, if I don't pick up, shoot me a text. <laughs> so, Does it? Yeah. I, yeah. I think yeah. a lot of people do that in voicemails now. Yeah. I mean, because text is so much easier. I can be in a yes. meeting and somebody's yammering on uh, as they do in meetings. And the next thing I know, I get a text message. Oh, okay. Let me respond to them really quick. The worst is when somebody leaves a voicemail saying, hey, can you call me? It's yeah. Like, <laughs> Listen to my voicemail. Then you would know just to text me. So, so yeah. So before we get into you uh, you and the real estate, what'd you, what'd you do before? Where'd you grow up? Yep. Uh, grew up right here in Carmel. Um, born and raised here in Carmel. And then uh, went to Indiana University uh, for school. And then moved up here and... I think this i think real estate was my fifth job i want to say out of college so i just kind of bounced around um entry level sales job from entry level sales job and then just like most realtors just kind of stumbled into it about eight years ago yeah it is funny how a lot of agents stumble into real estate yeah it's not an intention but once they get in you fall in love with it oh yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah like so few people you know, go to school for residential real estate. Right. It's almost unheard of. Yeah. You know, you'll, you'll get the person occasionally who gradu graduates from high school and gets into real estate or graduates from college, gets into real estate, but it's usually like their parents were realtors. And so they knew that's exactly what they want to do. But most realtors, even the uber successful ones, it's their second or third career. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what did you study at IU? Uh, business management. So it's, okay broad as you so, can get yeah. and i still had no clue what i what i wanted to do even once i graduated from from college okay so you were at kelly school uh the spia school spia. yeah okay, yeah that's where my, my son yeah graduated. one of my I, sons uh, graduated from spia i took about two weeks of k201 with the with the uh with the b school <laughs> and realized that uh yeah i just didn't have what it takes to put together an excel spreadsheet that wasn't what you wanted now that's all i do is play with excel <laughs> spreadsheets so <laughs> so uh do you think the prior jobs helped you out being the sales jobs? I mean, even though they're mm -hmm. entry level, but they teach you the basics. Of yeah. Like yeah. So um, two jobs ago, I worked at Angie's List. And with that job, I showed up at 830 in the morning, made 100 phone calls and then left at 5 p.m. at night. So it taught me to be really good on the phone and really comfortable on, um, on the phone and also comfortable calling people that might not want to talk to you. You know, I'm calling roofers who are 50 feet up in the air. I'm calling plumbers who are underneath, you know, a kitchen sink. And so you have to be quick. You've got to be efficient. Um, 
And that really started to build up my confidence on the phone and built, built up like my, my prospecting skills, I guess. And then from there, I, um, I worked for a new construction builder here in town and that kind of exposed me to, to, um, to real estate sales and working with people face to face. Cause that was, that was the first job that I had where I interacted with people face to face, like everything else was just over the phone. Um, so, you know, so I got the phone skills and then I got the interpersonal, you know, belly, belly to belly skills. Um, and then I just kind of merged those two into real estate now. Yeah. yeah, that's, it's, it's amazing. I was in real estate sales, in the new home sales also, and mm -hmm. it's amazing how, what a great place that is to learn selling houses. And almost everybody I know who was in, in new home sales, when they leave it, if they leave it, mm -hmm. They either become a real estate agent or they get into mortgages. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <do>. yep. <laughs> you know, very it's, true. It's those. It's what we see around us, but it, it is a great training ground for real estate. I, I, yeah. I'm just going to guess. I bet you when you started, you did a lot of open houses. Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Started in this side of real estate. Yes. Yeah. So that's uh, that was one of the pillars of, of my business, um, and still kind of is. Um, was one to two open houses almost every single week for you know probably a year or two at least and that was how i got most of my first you know first clients was through open houses and what's the process for you in an open house like when you set it up what do you do to you know make sure that it's a successful open house mm -hmm. for for both you and and your your seller yeah um, so, you know, it, it starts about three or four days before the open house. Most open houses, you know, you know, are on Sundays. So Wednesday or so, Wednesday, Thursday, I'll, uh, you know, do some social media ads. I'll do some door knocking, kind of depends on what the house is in the neighborhood and, and location and stuff, but do some door knocking, invite the neighbors, you know, to the open house, not so they can buy the house, but they've driven past the house for the past five, 10, 15 years just come and be a nosy neighbor, honestly. Right. Um, but also I kind of recruit them as, you know, as sales agents as well. So if they can see the inside of their house, you know, of their neighbor's house, then hopefully they can call up a, some friends or something that, you know, that they want to see live in the neighborhood right down the street from, from, from their friend. Then, you know, I've just kind of recruited a whole neighborhood to help sell my listing. Right. Yes. Um, and then, you know, I always arrive to the, you know, to the open house about, 45 minutes or so before it actually starts to make sure lights are on and it smells good and everything's arranged, you know, to, to my standard. Um, but I'm really like during the open house, I'm really not that guy that has like a whole, a whole spread and, you know, freshly baked cookies and water. Well, I'm not going to your open houses. No cookies. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'll, 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 I'll stop by Kroger on, on the <laughs> okay, way to my next open works. house and, uh, and lay them out. Yeah. Um, you know, partially because like, I don't want, you know, there to be potentially a big mess around the house, right. you know, from crumbs and everything. Um, and also like, I want the focus to be on the house, you know, not, you know, you know not, not the bells and whistles during, you know, that, that are offered during the open house. Right. Um, and you know, that there's, I've got a ton of scripting for open houses and it's really about conveying, you know, my expertise in real estate and the house and, and, and the neighborhood and, Sh showcasing my, my my knowledge of the market and that's how i connect with people because really like what i think a stat is like three or four percent of houses sell as a result of the open as a result of the open house so it's unlikely somebody's going to walk through the door and say this is the first time i've seen the house i i now want to write an offer right but what an open house does is it creates more buzz more exposure um for that particular house um and you know, th that's one reason I'm still doing open houses. You know, even eight years later, I've, you know, I've got a team behind me and everything. I'm still doing open houses because, A, I think I'm pretty good at it. Um, and, B, it's creating more exposure for my seller. You know, exposure uh, will get more people through the door and, um, you know, hopefully more, more offers on the table. So for newer agents, because I know we have a lot of newer agents that listen to this. Mm -hmm. So an open house doesn't isn't just for the seller. It's also for you because – People might look at a home, just walk in and just be like, oh, I like this home, but I want a bigger yard. And then you'd be like, let me go show you one. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's doing prep work leading up to the open house of seeing what other houses are available that are somewhat similar to this house. You know, so if somebody comes in and says, I need a bigger backyard, you know, actually like five minutes down the road, there's, there's a house for sale. It's $10,000 more, but it's got a great backyard. 
you know, I've, I've got time after this open house to, to go take a look at it. Um, you know, and also knowing the comps in the neighborhood, because, you know, you might have somebody come through and they say, this house seems overpriced. And then, you know, at that point you can say, well, actually, according to the comparable sales, the house down the street sold for X price and it was better or it was worse. Um, so that's, you know, based on that comp or these comps, that's how we came up with this list price, you know, and so that, you know, that kind of helps to justify the list price, you know, um, as you're conveying that to one of the open house visitors. Yeah, I, I think that the open house, to me, it's one of the most important things that you can do. Um, and it really helps the neighbors, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it because, you know, every neighbor, like, I, I'm in a smaller community. And I, I think there's 32 houses. And I think I've been in two of them, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So if there's an open house and and you and somebody lets you know you're welcome as a neighbor, mm -hmm. I'm I'm likely to go see it. But yeah. I never feel like I should go because you don't want to waste their time, especially as a mortgage person. I don't want them to think I'm, you know, so I never go. Yeah. Yep. Um, but you don't see anybody's house. So it's, and then if you go see it, it not only could change your thoughts because they're selling new homes. We know that the house that they look at the model is mm -hmm. the one they want usually, oh, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it does, it does. I can see where it helps sell the house. I can see where it helps the neighbors, the neighbors get to know and who doesn't want to know. I mean, the very first thing when something's listed in our neighborhood, the very first, the buzz that goes around is what is that house priced at? Mm -hmm. Right. That's yeah. what everybody wants to know. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Then, then they come in and they look around and they're like, my house is better than this house. And they're listing it for this price. Yeah. You know, I might be able to get, right. you know, Twenty five thousand dollars more for my house um, than you know than the house that's currently for sale. Yes. So then you just kind of got a new lead out of it. Yeah. And All that's right. Invaluable. Yeah. All right. I know we are coming up on the break. So Mike, how would somebody get a hold of you? Um, three ways: phone number three one seven nine six five five zero three four, or you can shoot me an email mike dot feldman at compass dot com, or you can uh, follow me or shoot me a a, a DM on Instagram. It's at Mike underscore Bond Real Estate. And Rick, how would they get a hold of you or I? Uh, go to hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com or call 317-672-1938. That's 317-672-1938. <laughs> I was scared to say it. I you, knew it, but I was scared to say it. You would think after roughly, what, 50 shows easily with that phone number, you should easily get that? Yeah, that's why I wrote it down right here. No, oh. <laughs> and you still don't <laughs> miss it. <laughs> All right, so after the break, we'll find out what is Mike's superpower. Thanks for listening to Indy's Real Estate Gurus. The gurus we interview share valuable insights. They reveal their strengths, personalities, and how they will work for you. While we hardworking mortgage guys secure your best mortgage, real estate gurus work hard too. They avoid problems the amateurs don't see. They listen. They find unrealized opportunities. If you're buying or selling a home, a real estate guru is a valuable asset. If you've even think if you're even thinking about buying or selling your home, keep listening and definitely call one of Indy's real estate gurus. Hey, right. right. welcome back from the break. Great news is Mike's still here, so we can continue asking him the hard questions. <laughs> All right. So, but before we get into what is his superpower, it's time for question of the week. The question of the week is sponsored by, hey, Rick and I, the hardworking mortgage guys, where we believe in helping you and supporting you and your realtor by sending constant updates on your loan process. Contact us today at hardworkingmortgageguys.com, and we can put your mortgage plan together. All right, Mike, here's a hard question. Mm -hmm. What was your first car? A 1999 Acura Legend. That's a good one. Yeah. Why does everybody have good ones? And I had to drive a gremlin. <laughs> well, I bet you his lasted more than a week. Probably did. Eh, maybe nine months. Yeah, a little <laughs> really? bit longer than a week, but not, not, what not much longer. Um, I, I was pouring more money into it than it was uh, worth. Yeah. Okay. Did you enjoy that car? Uh, loved it, yeah, for the yeah. first couple of months. Yeah, yeah. Tell you and, had to pour more money in it. Yeah. yeah, yep. What was your favorite car that you've ever had? Um, my car right now, an Audi Q7. Oh yeah, what yeah, an awesome! I car. love it. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been wonderful. Yeah, that that's a that's a great vehicle. Yeah, my I have friends that have have a Q. Okay, they yep. call it a Q. It's Q7, but yep. that's all that's 
Yeah, I think that's, there's four different Qs right. now at this point. And they're all it's all Q for the SUV. And then it goes yep. uh, numbers, and it goes by high, the bigger number, the high, the bigger size. Correct, yeah. yeah. Yep. So same thing they do with the, the cars are A's, and the sports yeah. cars are S's. So. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Ian and I, we are not into cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like back in high school, I knew every single make and model of everything that was on the road. And oh, really? Tr- yeah, traveled around the country, going to auto shows and everything. Um, you know, subscribed to Motor Trend, all that. But oh, yeah. these days, you know, I can recognize a car and you know give you some details about it. But I'm not not a car guru anymore whatsoever. We don't have the time yeah, that we no. used to have in high school, do no. we? No, nope. we have more things on our mind. <laughs> we do, yeah. You yep. know, it's bad. Like, uh, I go to basketball early in the morning, yeah. and I'll see headlights behind me, and just by the headlights, everything else is completely dark, and I can yep. tell you who's behind me. I'm able to do that with cop cars. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, so yes. That, that's when it becomes handy. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. a superpower. <laughs> yes. You know, superpowers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what What would you say your superpower superpowers are? Besides recognizing uh, cop cars' headlights. That's right. Um, good question. So. Um, you know, I, I I wish I could say I could see through walls or I could fly, and that was my I superpower. Wish you could. That but would be awesome. Yeah, um, I would say one of my superpowers would be um, marketing of you know of, of real estate, but more importantly, marketing of of listings, and find you know taking a unique listing or a difficult listing and figuring out a way to market it. Um, and drawing attention and you know in the right ways to the property, I think is something that uh, I really kind of lean into, and is definitely a strength of mine. Yeah, and I, I, it's so important that somebody, if you're listing a house, you know how to market it. It's mm-hmm. a, it's a lot more involved than just putting it on the, I'll, I'll call it the MLS, but it's the yeah. PLC now, right? Yeah, yeah. But just in case people don't all know, so. What what all do you do? Like obviously you put it on the BLC, but that's only sure. a piece of it. Yeah, that's yeah. And then, because because I have seen, there's certain certain um, agents I've seen when I was selling new homes, mm-hmm. and there was one in particular that when you gave him a listing, he sold the listing, mm-hmm. right? Now not he didn't necessarily physically sell it, but he got mm-hmm. he marketed it in such a way that he was it was far superior than what I saw for most, and I don't know what he did. It's just that his, his, they sold. Yeah. So what is it that you do to make, you know, to make sure it gets out there and gets sold? Yeah. So there's, there's a couple different uh, layers to it. So 98, 99% of buyers see a house for the first time online, okay. you know, so you've got to have the best photography and I'm, you know, I've been with my photographer for seven years or so. And okay. I think that they're the best in the industry. Um, nationally known, you know, they've been publicized in, in multiple, uh, you know, online and digital publications, um, photography and, and videography as well. You know, so yeah, you can absolutely, especially in the past couple of years, the market that we've been seeing, put a sign in the ground, heck, you can take a couple iPhone photos and it'll sell. Absolutely. Right. But is it going to sell for top dollar? You know? And so it starts with, it starts with photos and then doing a video as well. For pretty much all of our listings, no matter what the price point is, we, we do a video. There's some videos that are a little bit more basic and simple. Um, you know, it starts with me saying a little bit, you know, a little something about the house on the outside of the house, then B-roll on the inside, and then I'll say a little something, you know, outside the house to kind of wrap things up. So that'd be like a 30-second to a minute long listing video. There's other listing videos that I've done where they're five, six minutes long. Um, of me kind of giving a tour of the, of the property. Then there's other listing videos that I've done. Like there's one that I did. I had a listing last year. It was a uh, 8,000 square feet or so. And before we staged it, you know, it, the house echoed and there are a lot of empty rooms and a lot of just big empty spaces. And so, you know, I knew I, that I wanted to do something unique for this listing. Cause it was a one point, almost $7 million listing. So I knew I wanted to do something big and unique. So I actually hired a ballerina to um, like, she's, you know, she's pretty nationally well known in the ballerina world. Like I've never heard of her. <laughs> You're not a ballerina. <laughs> no, I'm not, no. I can a, see you in a little thought. tutu going yeah. through a house. <laughs> Look at the fridge. Yeah, yeah. That'd actually be a pretty funny video. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, so I hired this ballerina and got my videographer and she did her twirly, you know, all the stuff that ballerinas do. She did that throughout the entire house. 
um, really showcasing like the space that it has and, you know, ballerinas are kind of associated with elegance, you know, and, and oh, luxury yeah, a little bit. And so this was a you know, high end luxury home. And so I kind of combined the two of like, you know, showcasing her talent as well as kind of, um, marrying like the, you know, the, the, the ballerina image of, you know, high end sophistication, um, into this listing video. And it turned out phenomenal. Like I, it's still one, one of my favorite listing videos. Um, so it's like the, the video is just to, to be able to tell a story about the house that you can't see in the photos because photos are, you know, I think it's two dimensional. Um, a video would be three dimensional. Right. And so it show it showcases parts of the house that you can't tell in the photos. So good photo, good video, you know, that's, you know, that, that that's the standard. Um, and also having a really good digital presence from, you know, from uh, posting on social media, you know, both like the, the professional photos that they're taken as well as just doing like raw Instagram or Facebook stories, you know, showcasing the house, like not from a professional viewpoint, but from like the unfiltered raw viewpoint of kind of like a selfie almost, you know, so posting on social media, YouTube as well, and then, you know, using the right hashtags and like there's a whole, you know, science behind how to post and when to post and, you know, how to, you know, tag different companies in that post. That Go ahead. Good? Okay. Um, and so, uh, um, so yeah, so, you know, having a really good social media presence and also um, having a, real, a really good um, uh, digital ad presence as well. So that's something that we're experimenting with quite a bit these days is putting something up on YouTube and then running ads on YouTube um, to the specific demographic who would be more likely to purchase, you know, purchase that listing. You know, so it's kind of thinking of of the avatar for that buyer of that listing and then catering the marketing around them. Um, and so, you know, that that's all from a digital perspective. But once people get inside the house, then they then they also have to be wowed when they're inside the house. You know, so myself and my team, we really pride ourselves on um, on advising our sellers to you know to to do certain things that we know they're going to get an ROI on. You know, so whether it's like making improvements to certain aspects of the, of the house, down to the very small things like taking a magic eraser throughout every single surface of the house. And, you know, getting like a little can of uh, trim paint, touching up like the little tiny nicks that you see just from normal wear and tear of a house, touching those up and really kind of decreasing that that lived in feeling and the lived in look of a house. Um, and, you know, decluttering, depersonalizing, but not completely depersonalizing. There's a lot of realtors that will say, take all your personal photos off the walls. Um, you know, we don't want any buyer to, to know who you are or, you know, to, um, you know, to see any of your personal photos on there. For me, I kind of have the opposite, you know, approach to it. Like if it's a family home, um, then, you know, most likely like the buyer's going to be a family. Right. Right. And so if they see that a family's living there and they're happy and they're loving living there, then they're going to be able to envision their family living there, you know, a little bit easier than if they're just staring at blank walls everywhere. Right. You know, so it's kind of personalizing it a little bit and kind of tugging at the emotional strings of, you know, of the buyer. Um, you know, so that's all, that all goes into the, the prep work of, you know, of a house. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty diligent on making sure that before I put a house on the market, it's up to my standard. You know, because sellers are always going to want to put their house on the market, and not spend a single dime to put it on the market. Um, but, but I go in houses for a living. Like I, I know what a house looks like if it's going to get, you know, if it's more likely to get multiple offers. Right. Or there's houses I walk into and I'm like, there's no, re there's, there's, there's no mystery why it's still on the market now, because you know it's it's in bad condition or they should have done, you know, it's dated or whatever. And so, you know, it's really kind of advising the sellers that like, this is what I do for a living. And I know what it's going to take to get, you know, to get top dollar for your house. Then, you know, ultimately it's up to them if they want top dollar for their right. house. Uh, and are they willing to do what it takes to get top, do top dollar for their house? Um, nine times out of 10, people want the most, you know, most amount of money for their house. Yeah. Every <laughs> once in a while, you'll get the seller that just says, I want a quick sale. Money's not, not, you know, not important, but I just want a quick sale. 
sure. And that's that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll approach that sale differently, but most people are going to want top dollar. Right. And, you know, I know what it's going to take to get top dollar for the house. Yeah. Well, everybody's in a different situation, right? Yeah. So oh, yeah. That, yep. that's why it's that way. But so what I hear is number one, you have a very detailed plan. Yeah. And number two, you're very innovative. Try to be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yep. to, to, to hire a ballerina mm-hmm. to show off the space, to me, that's extremely innovative. Yeah. It's something that, you know, I. Uh, How do you think, think of it? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Good question. Um, I honestly can't remember how I thought of it. That's, I don't know. That's yeah, I, 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 I do draw a lot of inspiration from other agents that I follow on social media. Um, they're all in, you know, big markets like L.A., New York, Miami. But, um, yeah, w- with the ballerina one, I think that was, you know, I was just thinking of some, some way to showcase the space that, that the house has. Um, and it just kind of dawned on me one day, I guess. Um, That's incredible. And there, there's another where I, where I hired a husband, wife, um, actor, actress, and um, got a Bentley and had like a, my seller had a Bentley. So we used the Bentley in the video and we really kind of showcased the, the lifestyle that comes with buying this house, which is a luxury townhome downtown. Okay. And so, um, yeah, we just kind of created a, it was like a three minute long video. Um, it was, it was almost like a movie in, in a way we showcased them like having dinner downtown and then they drove the Bentley North to the town home. And then we, showed them like coming into the door, you know, into the town home and then going up to the rooftop terrace for a glass of wine and really kind of showcasing, you know, not just the house, but the lifestyle that comes with buying that sort of property. Wow. So. That's incredible. Well, we are running uh, out of time on the radio show. So sure. if some, how would somebody get a hold of you if they had any real estate questions? Yeah. So the best way, uh, three best ways would be my phone number. So 317-965-5034, email mike.feldman at compass.com or on Instagram, Mike underscore Bond Real Estate. Awesome. And because I'm so good at it, if you need to get a hold of Ian or I, it's hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com or 317-672-1938. That's 317-672-1938. All right. And uh, you're listening on the radio. Tune in for the rest of uh, the podcast or slash radio with Mike at Indies Real Estate Gurus. All right. Hey, welcome back uh, to Indies Real Estate Gurus. We still have Mike here. Uh, he started running out of the door. Rick tackled him, but he's back <laughs> in his chair now. All right. So here's the question I always like to ask. What's your most memorable deal? Mm, good one. Um, well, my most memorable is kind of my most notorious, and that was where um, there was a renovated home and got some buyers for it. Um, before it was it was completed and so I was representing you know both the buyer and the the seller which is something that you know I do a couple times a year Um, and closed on the house and there there there's some craftsmanship things that you know that the buyers notice about the house and the buyers decided to come after me instead of coming after the um, the guy that the sellers who were also the, the guys that renovated the house and so, like, you know, there were shelves that fell down. So they actually thought that it was my fault that the shelves fell, fell down and not the contractor's fault. So they came after me legally. Um, and, you know, instead of going after the contractors, it, you know, it didn't go anywhere because um, it's, it's not like I was the one that put them up. Right. Um, but that, that was my most memorable, but not, not, in, a, <laughs> not, not, not in a good way. <laughs> so. well, I would have thought they'd have gone after the contractor, obviously, you the people, think? the seller. Yep. And then – if they had an inspection, maybe the inspector, although they, they did inspection. Yeah. yeah. So, but the real estate agent, that's a, uh, that, that doesn't connect in my mind. I don't know how they can. I don't know that. if there's any precedent about them going yeah. after the real estate agent successfully, which is why it didn't go anywhere. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So do you have any positive, a, a positive one that you, it was a really good transaction that you, you have a great memories of? Um, yeah. So I, um, my very first million dollar listing, it was a one point four million dollar house i think and we put it on the market maybe seven days later it got um got an offer and the buyer of it was a very well-known race car driver and we were kind of going back and forth on price a little bit and the buyer came back with a price that wasn't quite acceptable to the seller but the seller's son was a big race car uh, uh 
a racing fan. And so he said, you know, my, my seller said, we'll accept that offer if you um, provide a signed racing helmet for my son, like as a part of the negotiation. And so, of course, the, the, the buyer did agree to that because it didn't cost him anything. Right. Um, and so, like, as a part of the purchase agreement, there is a signed um, um, IndyCar helmet. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, oh so, did you put, hey, needs two, one for <laughs> yeah. him and one for me? You got to mention, yeah, that <laughs> there should have been one for me. Yeah. yeah. So, so that, that, was, that was unique and, you know, pretty memorable. I don't think I'd, I'll ever negotiate a uh, racing helmet into a purchase agreement yeah. again. Yeah, so, but see, again, it's cool. pretty innovative to figure out a way to make yeah. it work for everybody. Yeah, yeah, right? like, the, you know, something like that, I don't know, like 500 bucks or so if you go down to a, you know, sports mem- memorabilia type of store. But, you know, to the seller, it meant a lot more than just, you know, oh, yeah. than, than that. It, to his son, it, it meant a lot that he was, you know, he got this signed, uh, it, you know, personalized helmet uh, from a really well-known driver. Right. So yeah, that's that was cool. Yeah, and that's you really can't cool. get that most other places. No. I mean, we have so many racing companies here that yeah. it's not too hard. Yeah. But I mean, you go to Iowa. I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't I don't see too many race car drivers. No, I, <laughs> way I don't out think there. So. I don't <laughs> think so. Bad about Iowa for. <laughs> <laughs> that's not nice. So, when if somebody's out looking. To, let's say hire a real estate agent to list their home. Mm-hmm. What traits or characteristics should they look for in the agent? Good question. So I think that um, duration in the industry relatively means nothing. So there's a lot of people that say, I want to work with an agent that, you know, it's been in, in, in the industry for 10, 15, 20 years. Um, you know, there's plenty of agents that I know that have been in, in the, in the industry for, 30 years, but they average to sell three homes a year. Um, and so, you know, I think that experience definitely plays a factor. Absolutely. And knowing the ins and outs of a deal, knowing the contracts really well and how to market the house properly, that's something that you get from experience. Um, you know, I think choosing an agent that, um, that knows the community and knows that neighborhood really well, um, is really important. You know, and especially in like a more urban area like, you know, like Indianapolis, not so much in the suburbs, but especially in an urban area where the difference between one street and another yeah. street could be a hundred thousand right. dollars right, or even more. You know, there's houses down in Marine and Kessler that are a million dollars. And then four blocks away, that same house would be five hundred thousand dollars. Right. And so knowing the nuances and the differences between neighborhoods, that's that I think is really critical. Um really knowing how to market a house and, you know, beyond what I think is, should be the standard, you know, perfect, you know, there's so many realtors out here that, you know, they, they, they promote or, and they, they market themselves as, you know, as, as agents who are professional agents because they use professional photography. And to me, I'm like, yeah, that should be a standard. You know, that's like a doctor saying, you know, I, I sterilize my hands every <laughs> single time before a surgery. It's like, yeah, it kind of should be expected. <laughs> so, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, so going beyond just what a traditional realtor should do, you know, I think is is important, especially if you have a either a really high priced house or a unique house, whatever, you know, whatever unique means. Um being able to market it to as many people as possible, but also the right people, you know, is, is, is really important. Like if you have a million dollar house, probably not going to market it to a first time home buyer. Right. You know, there absolutely are some first time home buyers who can't afford a million dollar yes. house. They're the exception. Right. You know, um, you know, I'm, I'm biased cause I have a team, but working with an agent that has a team, I think is critical. There are absolutely some agents, you know, some solo agents, that are phenomenal agents and I don't want to knock them, but I think that they're kind of the exception as well. So working with an agent that has a support staff or has a support system of some, of, of some type is really important because, you know, an agent shouldn't be a jack of all trades. Like we should specialize in, in, a, in a couple things. Um, paperwork, like I'm not that good at like in organizing everything. Like that's why, you know, I, I have a whole admin team on, you know, on, on right. staff. Yep. Um, is to handle that paperwork. Same principle behind like there's doctors and nurses. Doctors can go into the you know the the surgical room for 
one hour and get the job done. And then for the next three hours, the nurses are, you know, are taking care of everything else. Two very, very important roles. Um, but without nurses, doctors wouldn't exist. And without doctors, nurses wouldn't exist. And right. so working with somebody who, who has, you know, who, who has a team to help market the house. And, you know, if that agent is out of town and somebody wants to see the house, having somebody on their team to show that house, I think is critical. Um, and, you know, it also shows that that agent has, you know, treats their business like a business. You know, again, if, if you don't have an assistant or if you don't have a staff, then you are the assistant. You are, you know, you are the runner. You are like, you do everything. Right. And so, you know, having, you know, having that support system, I think is, is really, really important. Um, you know, when, when, when choosing a, a listing agent. So when you're talking about team, so what does your team look like? What is your makeup? Yeah. So right now I've got uh, two agents on my team and then I have uh, two support staff. So I've got a director of operations and she, she also, the, I, I change her title depending on who I'm talking to. Yes. I you know, so that. she's a listing coordinator if I'm talking to a seller. Um, she doesn't really interact with buyers a whole lot, but you know, for my seller, she handles all the marketing and executes on everything. She puts the listing in the, in the MLS, she handles the disclosures and, you know, really, you know, making sure that, you know, the house is looking as good as possible from a, you know, from a marketing perspective. Right. Um, and she does a lot of behind the scenes stuff as well with, um, just pouring into our database, general marketing stuff for, um, geographic farms or sending emails and, um, and e-newsletters, things like that. Um, I've got a transaction coordinator that, you know, once a buyer or a seller gets on a contract, she, you know, she coordinates all the paperwork and the closing and everything. Um, so, so I've got, um, those two and then, then the two agents, they don't, you know, I don't really, I don't look at them as working for me by any means. Um, they all, you know, they both run their own separate business, but, um, you know, like I, I'll, I'll send them leads here and there. Um, but it's, it's definitely not what I've built my business off of. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I, I'd be, I'd be looking to grow, but right now there's, um, just three agents and two support staff right now. Yeah. But that, it's important for those, those agents to have somebody like you as a mentor, because you've been yeah. through it. You, yeah. You've done this a long time. You sold new homes also. Yeah. So you have a great background and you have a ton of knowledge. So it's important for new people or inexperienced people. I think even sometimes for experienced people to have others around them yeah. who can, who can help. It helps. I'm sure you even have times when you're running, you're talking to somebody and they, and they are kind of, you know, you can, you can bounce things off of somebody with equal experience That's and huge. come up with great answers. Right. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like there, there are a couple, there's a couple different reasons why I started the team, but one is because the first couple of years of you know me being a realtor, like I screwed up a lot, like and I would get into situations where I would have no clue where to turn, and so I kind of wanted wanted to provide a space, you know, provide provide a vehicle so that somebody can get in, into the industry, whether they're brand new to the industry or two, three, four years in, into the industry, and they can avoid making the same mistakes that I did. And, you know, they would have somebody who, if they get into a tough bind, they would know exactly who, you know, who, uh, who to turn to. And back when I was a solo agent, like, there would also be a ton of agents, you know, who come up to me and ask for advice or, how, you know, how do I market a house, for example. And I'd be the first one to give all my secrets away and, you know, tell them everything that I knew. And then they'd take it and, and run the opposite direction. Um, so I figured, you know, if I start a team and be, be able to coach and mentor, but kind of keep it in house so that everybody benefits from it, you know, it, it, it's going to, you know, it's, it's going to rise all the ships. Um, and so, yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, running a team is really, really difficult, but it's, yeah. it's incredibly rewarding. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, just being able to turn to somebody, you know, when you are in a bind, that's that's really invaluable. My, there's an agent on my team, uh, recently got it, got into a situation with a seller that got really delicate and she had no clue how to handle this, this particular situation that had to do with inspection stuff and, um, contracts and everything. And so she, you know, she basically brought me on board and, you know, I, uh, you know, guided and advised and 
you know, and afterwards she was like, Mike, I would have had no clue how to handle the situation if it wasn't for you. And it, you know, that, that kind of validated one of the reasons why I started the team, you right. know, is to be a support system yeah, that's and, awesome. and, and, and to be a coach and mentor. That's awesome. So what is one thing that, uh, that you think new agents struggle with? Because we know there's a high turnover mm-hmm. with agents. I think somebody said within the first five years, like 87% drop. Yeah. So since you're training people and everything, what do you think is the most struggle? They have a lot of struggles. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, most of them have shiny object syndrome and they want to reinvent the wheel. So they think of these new marketing ideas that they think is going to be fantastic and they do it in a false flat. Um, and every once in a while, like a new marketing idea or a new way to get a client works, but sticking to the basics of, you know, open houses and cold calling and just figuring out a way to have more real estate conversations, essentially. Um, that's what's always going to work. Um, and so, you know, agents not wanting to do what's proven to, to have worked over the past hundred years that people have been selling houses, you know, um, or past 5,000 years since they're, <laughs> since the first house, I guess. Um, and, you know, also like not, not spending their time in the right areas. You know, there, there's so many agents these days that they'll spend hours and hours perfecting their email signature or hours upon hours, you know, perfecting their, their logo. And, you know, you know, they'll, uh, um, j- just spend, spend their time in areas of the business that doesn't actually get them business that they mistake activity with productivity. And that's something that, you know, I'm guilty of, everybody's guilty of, but, um, especially new agents, you know, they'll, they'll go to, um, you know, three speaking engagements a week and they'll have lunch with realtors and they'll do all these things that they think is going to get them business, but it doesn't. And so, you know, they'll look back on their say 40 hour work week and they've been busy that the whole 40 hours, but you know, an actual income producing activities they've maybe spent an hour doing. Um, so I think that's probably what most agents get in trouble doing is that they're not spending time in, in, in the right areas. So it's the income producing pieces they need to do. Mm-hmm. And this is just my guess from being around people and being in sales my entire life is the reason that they do these other activities and don't do the income producing activities is because they don't like to do the income producing activities. And so mm-hmm. they avoid them and they do the things mm-hmm. that don't produce any income, but they're more fun to do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Pe- people, uh, you know, they, uh, um, they know what, what has to get done. But like you said, it's not fun. Right. And so they would rather stay in their comfort zone um, and not step outside the comfort comfort zone because growth and comfort can't exist in the the same space. It's either, you know, if you're comfortable, you're not growing. And if you're growing, there's a lot of uncomfort that comes with that. And they're just not willing to step outside of their comfort zone in in order to grow. Yeah, I I, I can tell you what what I've learned is, and and a lot of it from – people like you, you, and you lay it out really well, is number one, you have to do the things you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. Not, and, and I'll say you have to cold call, okay? Now, yeah. you don't necessarily have to cold call, but it is a tried and true absolute piece that works if you do it and force yourself to do it, Yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I think you have to have mentors. You have to have yeah. somebody there to support you. And so I think that's another real big piece of what you, of what has to happen, but if you're not willing to 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 get out of your comfort zone and do the things like you you were used to calling because you were calling a hundred mm-hmm. people a day, right? Yep. Every every real estate agent I've talked to that ha- came from that background where they called, they come into real estate or mortgage and they call, they they become successful. Yeah. I think yeah. it's absolutely one of the pieces. Mm-hmm. Now you got to know who to call, those type of things. That's where a mentor comes. Got to know what to say and all right. that. But yeah, that, that's a very good point. That's that's where a mentor comes in, comes into play, or, or a coach, or yeah. you know anybody to to guide you or that you can look up to. Yeah, it's. Are you looking to hire people? Yeah. Are you looking to grow your team? Yeah. What do you yep. look for when you're when you are looking for somebody? What 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 do you traits are you looking somebody for? Somebody that really truly wants to work, 
and you know, there's, there, there's professional interviewers out there, you know, so they say all the right things and, and they know what to say and how to say it. But then when it actually comes down to like, you know, doing the, the daily activities to, to be successful, they'll, they'll fall flat. And so somebody who is, you know, whose back is up against a wall, you know, who, um, you know, says, I don't have a choice but to succeed and I'm going to do whatever it takes to, to get there. You know, like, like whatever their definition of success is, whether it's selling, you know, 12 houses a year or 100 houses a year. Um, for me, like, you know, like I don't want a, a part-time realtor because I think that my team's value proposition is, um, is more than just what a, a part-time realtor would want. Um, I want people who want to be the top, you know, who, who want to be the best and who want to succeed. And so I really just want somebody who is a really hard worker. Um, for my team, we, we do a lot on social media. So somebody who, you know, has a decent social media presence or at least knows the ins and outs of, of social media is something that um, is, is definitely important to me and, and for the rest of my team. Because, again, like that's a huge value proposition for us. And if that's not something that, um, you know, that you're going to pour into, then we're probably not the best team for you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I'd, I'd say that those two, those two traits are, are probably the, the top ones. So if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, maybe they want to be on your team mm -hmm. or they have real estate questions, they yep. want to talk about real estate, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, three ways. So one would be um, call me or text me. 317-965-5034. Shoot me an email, mike.feldman at compass.com. Or you can follow me and shoot me a DM on Instagram, uh, Mike underscore Bond Real Estate. Yeah. And one of the differences between Mike and I is he remembers his phone number. Yes. <laughs> he's, he's better at that than I am. Yeah. Because I have he, one. That's, and I've had yeah, that see? one for 15 years. Sounds yeah. like you have 20. I'm buying into so. what he said. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. I'm waiting for a real estate agent to give out their address and somebody just knock on their door. Hello! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that'd be very Can you look over this purchase really. agreement for yeah. me? Yeah. It's 9 9 30 at night. <laughs> get off yeah. my front porch. Yeah. <laughs> All right, have the bottle of scotch. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. If you need to get a hold of me or I, it's hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com. Or uh, uh, you can call 317-672-1938, 317-672-1938. Apparently, I forgot to put my phone on. <laughs> we are trying to be professionals here, Rick. Yeah. Well, the, the This is the second time, Rick. I know. Try well, is the key word in that sentence. Yeah, <laughs> try, and I was trying to be professional. I was. Uh, and if, uh, you know, please follow us so you don't miss any more of our mistakes. And reminder, if you know any friends, family, or coworkers looking to buy, sell, or refinance, contact Rick or I, and we'll be more than happy to help them. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great day. Branch NMLS number 33041. Rick Ripma's NMLS number 664589. Ian Arnold's NMLS number is 1995469. Equal housing opportunity. Some restrictions apply.